war images. Planes slam into Twin Towers. A U.S. soldier beheaded live on the internet. Another mosque burns. We see another embassy explode. Over 20,000 dead. Over 100,000 wounded. American flags draped caskets. Families grieve. We watch from our TVs. Despite a billion minds that scream like sirens, most will remain quiet. Watch. And the rest will march, armed with pickets and angry shouts in city streets to no avail. And those images compel, shock, numb, over and over. Wrong. Make no mistake, this poem is wrong. Wrong to the point that it shouldn't be read out loud. Wrong because all my life, the wrong gender, wrong height, wrong weight, wrong to yell back in defense of an insult, wrong to cry at the end of a movie, wrong to be so angry that I write a poem like this, wrong to take up so much room when I dance at a club and I am the wrong woman who will attract the wrong man and two wrongs only make a huge wrong. Wrong in general. No matter if I go to the right school, wrong to attend a university that's too expensive, too liberal, wrong myself liberal, not give a damn if what I say is wrong, so the town may as well gather to stone me because I reject this notion. For this is a poem about courage and acceptance because I accept who I am, no matter gender, height, weight, I will continue to yell, cry and write, to dance and celebrate my liberation because wrong is me. Public space. I don't look like the woman on the cover of Cosmo. People often stare as I enter a restaurant. And on blind dates, I'm never quite what they expect. But what can I do when I take up too much public space? I feel awkward when airlines ask me to buy two seats for the plane, or when I have to make an effort in class to squeeze into a petite desk. And what can a woman like me do when late bright is so expensive because they want to charge extra for taking up too much public space? I struggle daily to exercise and eat right, to avoid names like fatty, obese, because those names make me feel like an outcast. And I go to the gym at night out of fear that people will laugh at me for using up so much public space. I hear people whisper that my pretty face is such a waste every time I just want to die because they have no idea what it feels like when it's obvious you're taking up too much public space. <laughs> 10 pounds. About me, I've always been a size sexy, but never skinny. A Rubenesque body, wide hips, ample ass, who carries herself with class. Once told I'd grow out of my baby fat, but that was a damn lie. Now they tell me to lose 10 pounds. Just at first, at least 10, I hear it's not that hard over and over again. Lose a total of 60 if you want us to operate. But if only my body would cooperate. I see the scale fluctuate high and then low, low and then high, hunger so bad, I feel I'm gonna die just 10 pounds. So there it goes, doctor's appointments, dietitians, psychiatrists, even requests for gastric bypass. So I buy this shit to shrink my ass, yogurt, celery, hydroxycut, vitamins, water, meth even just to lose just 10 pounds. Set that small goal first, cause it's a lifestyle change. So I would no longer feel awkward at family gatherings. No more gawking in stairs or getting winded while going upstairs, just 10 pounds. So I wake up at 5 a.m. to exercise. Gotta stop crying when stores don't carry my size. Buy magazines for their tips and tricks, only to find hips with snips and tucks. This diet has me fucked. Lose just 10 pounds. <laughs> Obsessive way, cut out carbs, about to make me starve. So I chew gum, smoke a cigarette, just to try to forget just 10 pounds. Mornings in Berkeley. Still sleepy, I wake up too. A garbage truck clashing, metal dumpsters. The rattle of tin cans against pavement and broken shopping carts of the homeless. I begin my day, pull back my coral red sheets, feel the morning breeze and peek out my window at people like random spots of confetti. 
a fortune teller sits on a mint green mat, waits for someone to read, but barely makes money to survive. A man in a smoke black shirt, three sizes too small, stares at his reflection in the window and screams, touches his face, lost in his own insanity. Students scurry with backpacks or shoulder bags with laptops on their way to campus. Tourists with children in strollers and Gap and Rasputin bags, all careful not to make eye contact and hold their noses from the smell of urine on the sides of buildings. I see these things from the safety of a comfortably furnished room with French vanilla walls and admire the beautiful colors, but also see what can become an ugly reality. Thank you.